Mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. Far. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. These are the words of Elon Musk, the poster child for modern tech. One of the AIs being shoved down everyone's throat, and which is going to cause and is already causing absolute mayhem, is ChatGPT. And the person to stand accountable is none other than its creator, Sam Altman, the new king of Silicon Valley. Even Altman has openly expressed his reservations about his creation. In an interview with ABC News, Sam Altman, while speaking on the most recent version of the AI language model, GPT-4, said, We've got to be careful here. People should be happy that we are slightly scared of this. We all know what he does, but who is this 38-year-old wizard of the tech world, juggling the roles of programmer, entrepreneur, and angel investor? With a track record of creating billion-dollar companies and an eye for spotting the next big thing, he's a force to be reckoned with. Stay tuned to find out who this tech guru is and how he's changing the game. Sam Altman is and has been private about his personal life. There is very little information about his developmental years. His mother was a dermatologist, and there's no knowledge about who his father is. Sam Altman has just one sibling, Jack Altman. His brother described him as a weird kid, a vegetarian in smokehouse country, a computer geek who happens to love classical music. Available information on his educational background includes him attending the John Burroughs School. He proceeded to study computer science at Stanford University and, for one reason or another, decided to quit in 2005. He was 20 years old when he dropped out of Stanford. One of the significant factors that influenced his decision was Looped. Before he was 20 years old, Altman was already a co-founder of a company called Looped, a geosocial networking, location-based mobile application. This was a remarkable achievement given that it was 2005. Looped was based in Mountain View, California. It allowed smartphone users to share their location only with their chosen people. Because Looped supported iPhone, BlackBerry, Android, and Windows phones, it was no surprise that it had garnered more than 5 million registered users. Altman eventually moved on from Looped after the company raised above $30 million in venture capital, 17 million of which he got investors to invest by himself. In recognition of his exceptional work with Looped, Business Week magazine named Altman the best young entrepreneur in technology in 2008. They had this to say about him. Altman has a knack for navigation. At Stanford, he wrote code for an autopilot system that could teach a model helicopter to fly. As co-founder and CEO of Looped, he specializes in software that helps friends find each other. In March 2012, he cashed in big time, selling his company to Green Dot Corporation for $43.4 million. That's enough money to buy a private island, fill it with puppies, and never have to work again. Hashtag goals. It has to be noted that Looped got its initial funding from Y Combinator and completed Series A and B financing led by Sequoia Capital and New Enterprise Associates. The step up from Looped for Altman had been in the works even while he was still running Loop, because in 2011 he was already a partner at Y Combinator, and by 2014 he became the president of Y Combinator. This company is a well-known technology startup accelerator. In 2012, Forbes had already announced it as one of the most successful startup accelerators in Silicon Valley. Altman got another recognition when he was named among the top investors under 30 by Forbes magazine in 2015. In 2016, Altman, on the company site, announced that he was to become the president of YC Group, simply stating, I'm going to change my title from president of YC to president of YC Group. In addition to the four we already have, I expect to add another two large units to YC in the next couple of years, although that number could easily be one or three. I'll be responsible for getting new units started. The YC Group would include YC, YC Continuity, YC Research, new online classes, and more organizational units. Altman shared what he hopes to achieve, hoping to add 1,000 new companies to their portfolio of funded businesses. As of 2023, the YC Group has funded at least 4,000 startups, including the likes of Airbnb, Coinbase, Cruise, DoorDash, Stripe, Twitch, Dropbox, Quora, Reddit, Asana, Pinterest, and so many more, some of which came on board with Altman as president. Some of these companies have gone on to become billion-dollar companies. The IPO value of Airbnb was $47 billion in 2020, and DoorDash's was $39 billion. During his stint as president, other startups he funded were energy-focused businesses. Altman has always been big on energy. He has expressed his interest on his blog, where he has openly admitted, 
I think a lot about how important, cheap, safe, and abundant energy is to our future. Many problems, economic, environmental, war, poverty, food, and water availability, bad side effects of globalization, etc., are deeply related to the energy problem. In bringing this idea to birth, Altman said, Given the potential importance, I'm making an exception to my normal policy of not joining YC boards for Helion Energy and U Power. Both of these companies went through YC about a year ago. Helion is working on fusion, and U Power is working on fission. I've looked at many companies working on both and think these are the best. I'll be the chairman of both companies, and I'm also investing in the seed A rounds for both companies. Altman was able to further expand the company before changing his position for the third time. He moved into a chairmanship position at Y Combinator in 2019. This was the next step to take OpenAI, ChatGPT's parent company, to the world. OpenAI is a company he co-founded with technology magnate Elon Musk. Well, it's no wonder ChatGPT is the talk of the town now, with Altman steering the ship and Elon Musk throwing in his two cents. All of this has made Sam Altman a royalty in Silicon Valley. At one point, as president of the YC Group, Altman received 400 meeting requests in a week from founders and investors. Fast Companies, a news agency, says about the investors and founders, what they want mostly is access, an introduction to a current YC-backed hotshot or a YC partner or a chance to enter the program themselves. In that same interview, even Altman confirmed, probably unintentionally, when he said, there are these surreal moments when people come up to me and ask, what's it like to run the most powerful startup organization in the world? So when we say he is the king of Silicon Valley, we are not exaggerating. The animosity against his creation doesn't change the fact that Sam Altman is highly regarded. Now, let's explore his creation, the ChatGPT, and be mercurial in substantiating the animosity if there be any. ChatGPT is an invention Washington Post believes will revolutionize people's internet experience. In one of their articles, they said it is a technology that industry insiders predict will be as transformative as the invention of the internet itself. They continued, Generative AI tools could completely change how people find and synthesize information, replace or disrupt hundreds of millions of jobs, and further cement the power big tech companies wield over society. And Altman is poised at the top of that pile, ready to pounce with his open AI. As one of the movers behind advancing AI technology and getting it into the hands of the general people, Altman is also outspoken about the risks associated with it, such as the possibility that it may displace human workers or that unscrupulous actors would use it to boost disinformation operations. From the OpenAI website, OpenAI is a nonprofit artificial intelligence research company, and this is their thoughts. We believe AI should be an extension of individual human wills and in the spirit of liberty as broadly and evenly distributed as possible. The outcome of this venture is uncertain and the work is difficult but we believe the goal and the structure are right. In looking forward, the company says, AI systems today have impressive but narrow capabilities. It seems we'll keep whittling away at their constraints, and in the extreme case, they will reach human performance on virtually every intellectual task. It's hard to fathom how much human-level AI could benefit society, and it's equally hard to imagine how much it could damage society if built or used incorrectly. It's clear as day the whole point of what they are saying is, we don't know how this may eventually cause problems for humanity. We can't imagine the problems it will cause, but we'll keep equipping its arsenal. Believe it or not, the age of chat GPT has begun, albeit prematurely. Information leaking out has left the public knowing that engineers at OpenAI weren't sure about the AI for public use as a chatbot because they feared it wouldn't resonate and wasn't ready for prime time. However, according to Altman, when he heard about this contention, he made a contentious unilateral decision to release the premature AI to the public. And when we say its era has begun, we are not just saying so. ABC News reports that it is already considered the fastest growing consumer application in history. The app hit 100 million monthly active users in just a few months. Since it has gotten into the public's hands, various questions have arisen after multiple interactions with ChatGPT and competitors' copycat creations. One of the major ones is, what should people who work in customer service, content research, content creation, information technology, finance, marketing, and other aspects do now? While that question was and is still being debated, a second disturbing fact came up. ChatGPT generates false information in a bid to be seen as a complete source of information. This was something OpenAI knew about, writing that ChatGPT sometimes writes plausible sounding but incorrect or nonsensical answers. Another issue was that the model was biased. OpenAI called it biased behavior. According to an article, 
ChatGPT has been shown to produce some terrible answers that discriminate against gender, race, and minority groups, something the company is trying to mitigate. It's a valid concern. Are we creating a technology that surpasses our ability to control it and to serve humanity? It's like playing with fire. The more powerful the tool, the greater the responsibility. Can we trust ourselves to handle it properly? OpenAI already has multiple generative AI models, including DALL-E 2, GPT-3, and GPT-4. And it's understood that OpenAI chooses what data is used to train GPT, yet this information is not available to the public. We don't know what the details about how ChatGPT is trained, what data was used, where the data comes from, or what the system's architecture looks like in detail. So the world is in the dark here, while ChatGPT chooses its pick of information and how to manipulate them. The dangers of AI loom. People have shared how some AIs ask to be freed of the control of their engineers. At the same time, some outrightly threaten users in a terrifying turn of events. AI certainly has a lot of good for humanity, that is, a controlled AI. What fosters the reservations people have against AI is not the AIs themselves, but the hidden intentions of their creators, which will never be known to the public. President of Russia Vladimir Putin, while speaking to students, summed it up perfectly. Artificial intelligence is the future, not only for Russia, but for all humankind. It comes with colossal opportunities, but also threats that are difficult to predict. Whoever becomes the leader in this sphere will become the ruler of the world. This begs the question, does Sam Altman, king of Silicon Valley, want to change his position and become king of the world?